Anthony from a chaser? Well, then please, come and have a go if you think you're clever enough. We'll see you next time on The Chase. Goodbye. Potato. Good afternoon, I'm Jacqueline Falgate. It's four o'clock in Melbourne and these are our top stories this Thursday. Crime family link a man wanted over the death of a South Melbourne mum. Details live. Target reached 100,000 coronavirus tests in less than a fortnight. Another 13 cases linked to a Brooklyn Meatworks, the latest developments. Secrets revealed what the Royal Commission said George Pell knew about sex abuse in the Catholic Church. And wind gusts bring down trees. Jane Barnes tracking developments. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Philgate. First at four, a nationwide manhunt is underway to find a member of one of Australia's most notorious crime families after the brutal murder of a young mother in her South Melbourne apartment. Cassie Zervos has the latest developments this afternoon and Cassie, he is known to police. That's right, Jackie. Ricardo Barbaro is wanted over the violent murder of Melbourne mum Ellie Price. Her body was found in her South Melbourne home on Monday, but police suspect she was killed several days earlier. Now, Barbaro is related to one of Australia's most dangerous families, and it's believed he has links to the mafia in Queensland. There is now a nationwide manhunt on to find him. Police held a press conference earlier today appealing for information has a family who's grieving for her um, and a community um, that is needing and deserving of answers. Just one final point if you're listening, Ricardo. The fact is we need to speak to you about the circumstances relating to Ellie's death. This is not going to go away. Police also wanted to inform his family members or anyone who knows his whereabouts that if they, are uh, if they are hiding him, they could face accessory charges. So it is best to come forward. I will have the full details tonight at 6. Jackie. Cassie Zervos, thank you. Victoria has rocketed past 100,000 coronavirus tests ahead of schedule, hopefully paving the way for the state's lockdown to be eased in the coming days. Laurel Irving was at today's briefing with the Premier. Laurel, this is good news, but it doesn't mean we're all going to be able to visit our mums on Mother's Day. Unfortunately not, Jackie. The Premier is really sticking to his guns on this issue despite the uh, incredible results from this testing blitz. We know Victoria was shooting for 100,000 tests in a fortnight. Well, we still have two days to go and we've already reached 106,000. And significantly, only a small handful of those have actually tested positive, suggesting a really low rate of community transmission. But the Premier has always said there'll be no change in Victoria before May the 11th. There will be a National Cabinet meeting tomorrow to discuss changes and easing of restrictions but the Premier says no matter what is decided then there'll be no change in Victoria to the current situation before Monday. An MCG's worth of Victorians have come forward and got tested. That makes me proud and so so grateful and that's going to give us options. It is likely uh, that if we loosen up some of the restrictions we have in place we will see more and more outbreaks. Let's wait and see what the results say. Not much not much point people queuing to get tested if we're not going to wait and see what those results say. I've got no announcements to make about restrictions. I plan to make those announcements on Monday. But I have no announcements to make on uh, restrictions today. If I have anything to say after National Cabinet, then I'll be before you saying that. The Premier speaking there today. Laurel Irving is still with us. And Laurel, this cluster linked to a Brooklyn Meatworks continues to grow. Jackie, we've had 14 new cases in Victoria today and of those, 13 are linked to Cedar Meats. It takes the total number in that cluster to 62, by far the state's largest cluster. We know the state opposition is asking serious questions about who was told about the cluster and when. The government, though, is adamant the health department has handled this as best as it possibly could have. We've also been told now that another, a worker at McDonald's in Faulkner has now tested positive to coronavirus. Their last shift was on April the 30th, last Thursday. McDonald's says it has health department clearance to stay open. So still seeing a sprinkling of new mm. cases, but overall that rate of community transmission remains encouragingly low, Jackie. Yeah, great to hear Laurel Irving reporting live there. 
Now to today's other major story, the release of a Royal Commission report into how Cardinal George Pell handled complaints of historical sex abuse within the Catholic Church. Senior reporter Nick McCallum joins us live now from St Patrick's Cathedral. And Nick, talk us through what we've learnt today. Well, Jackie, the damning findings were redacted from the final report of the Royal Commission in 2017 because George Pell still had a court case to go, but they were released today. And basically, the Royal Commission did not accept Mr Pell's claims that he did not know about widespread child abuse in the Catholic Church until the 1990s. In fact, the Royal Commission believes he knew as early as 1973. George Pell also always insisted he was deceived by those about him. But the Royal Commission rejected that as well. The Royal Commission found it was likely that he knew about the offending of Gerald Ridsdale, who is Australia's most infamous pedophile priest, convicted of 65 cases of child abuse. And it was implausible Cardinal Pell was not told why Ridsdale was constantly being moved around. The Royal Commission also found in 1989 then auxiliary Bishop Pell should have recommended the removal or suspicion or the removal or suspension, rather, of Father Peter Searson, who had multiple reports of child abuse swirling around him. But the then Auxiliary Bishop Pell did nothing. He did not do anything to try and get him suspended or removed. This is what some of the anti-child abuse campaigners said about the Royal Commission findings today. It's devastating because, uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, the abuse could have and should have been prevented. This is what we've been trying to say for so long, that things were wrong, that people knew and they just moved offenders on. They need to act. Uh, he needs to be defrocked and removed of his, his status in the church. And Nick, the Commission also criticised the way Cardinal Pell treated those people who made the allegations. Yes, Jack, he was described in the Royal Commission often as being dismissive. In fact, in one case, he totally disregarded and then described as ridiculous allegations against a priest who was later jailed for child abuse. Now, so far, there has been no official response to the Royal Commission findings from Cardinal Pell himself or the Catholic Church. Jack? Nick McCallum reporting live there. Thank you. We have developing news. An inmate has been attacked at Barwon Prison. It's believed he was stabbed in the neck just after two o'clock. He's been taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and we'll bring you more on this developing story as details come to hand. The SES has had almost 100 calls for help in the past 24 hours as wild winds batter the state. Tom Chadwick has more. Well, damaging overnight winds of up to 100 kilometres an hour lashed this part of the state here in the Dandenongs, but arguably the hardest hit was residential Upway, where this home was no match for a 60-foot tree which pierced its balcony while residents were sleeping. Just a block away, several large trees brought down power lines just metres from a family home. We were lying in bed, we just heard this, this whooshing sound and the crash. These guys have lost heaps of trees. I've got one down in my gully that went down two weeks ago and we're still trying to chainsaw it up. Last week's heavy rain combined with the overnight winds caused damage across Victoria. In Murrumbina, a man was woken when a tree snapped and fell on his roof. I was sailing the seas of sweet dreams and then suddenly this morning at 10am there was a thunderous sound and I worked to find a whole tree had fallen on my roof. I've only got a short window of reprieve ahead of the next uh, cold front, um, which looks like it'll bring another cold burst on Saturday. Don't worry, not as bad as what we had last week. That was unbelievable. Winds are expected to ease over the state's southwest in the next couple of hours, with local residents here hoping the worst has passed.
Let's bring in our meteorologist, Jane Bunn, now. Hello, Jane. What are you tracking right now? Well, Jack, the cold front that is causing these gusty winds is sliding away, so conditions are rapidly easing. Now, the warning covered the ranges southwest and Melbourne, but will be reduced soon. It is mainly elevated and exposed parts in that yellow area. In Melbourne, the highest gust recorded was 82 k's an hour at the airport. There was damage in the Dandenongs, as we saw, but the weather station up at Mount Dandenong is sheltered, so it may have been much higher than 56. The wind does make it feel colder than it actually is. Currently 21 feels like about 13 but if you're sheltered it does feel quite warm. Zooming out and the biggest gust statewide was 117 at the Grampians but Gippsland and the northeast apart from the ranges missed out. Now those winds are rapidly easing. I'll have more soon Jack. Okay we'll see you then. Thank you Jane. Ruthless killer Scott Allen Murdoch has been sentenced to life behind bars for the murder of a Pakenham mum in 2013. Jodie Lee has the details. Scott Allen Murdoch took Kylie Blackwood's life and today he was sentenced to life behind bars for the crime. But in a cruel twist of fate, Miss Blackwood's family wasn't able to be in the Supreme Court as justice was served. They were told at the 11th hour they weren't able to attend due to COVID-19. It's less than ideal that we're in a pandemic at the moment and they're not able to be here in the way that they would otherwise like to be. Ms Blackwood was at the computer of her Pakenham home when Scott Murdoch broke in and stabbed her to death in 2013. Her body was found by her twin daughters on their return from school. Months earlier, Murdoch had also stabbed pensioner Elona Prohaska after breaking into her home. Today, Justice Jane Nixon sentenced him to life in jail with a non-parole period of 36 years for both crimes. Mrs Prohaska was stripped of her capacity to enjoy life. You did that. Carly Blackwood lost her life and her husband lost a loving wife. Her children lost a devoted mother. You did that. Scott Allen Murdoch was on parole when he carried out both attacks in 2013. But because he pleaded guilty to both crimes, Justice Jane Nixon said he was again entitled to parole after serving 36 years behind bars. The countdown is on to lockdown laws being eased, but will it be a national approach? We're live to Canberra next. And a story to tell as Baby Archie celebrates his first birthday. And later, the tale of two towns with very different restrictions. We're back soon, live across Victoria. It's going to knock you off your feet. The key players uncensored. I wish I could have done more to you. Shocking footage exposed. Our burning questions answered. He was killed. Tiger King. What really went down? Shh. Tuesday, 7.30, only on 7. Look after your health online at health365.com.au with over 700 of your favourite Australian-owned health, vitamin and skincare products online, home delivered fast. Buy smart, buy Australian. Online at health365.com.au. If you've been stood down during the COVID-19 crisis but have a workplace injury, you still have rights. Carbone lawyers are open for business and here to take care of you no matter the situation. Don't settle for less. Call Carbone Lawyers on 1800 369 888 today. G'day, Sue. Join me for a walk? I'd love to, but my legs are aching. I have the same problem. You need Revitiv. It's the circulation booster that gets my leg muscles pumping, which could improve circulation and help relieve aches, pains and swelling. Plus, it's drug-free. It's truth. Someone got Revitiv. I'll race you to the cafe. Get Revitiv today. It just might change your life. For Mother's Day, see offers in store or Revitiv.com. Telstra's smart modem is backed up by Australia's best 4G network. So if the connection to your house stops, your home Wi-Fi won't. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. OK, let's start something. Let's learn. Let's ponder. Let's do a degree and study online. Let's learn with the experts. So there's less of this and more of this. Let's hit the books. Let's collaborate, caffeinate. OK, now let's create. Let's make the grade. Let's start today. Let's do this with Swinburne Online. 
If you've been injured at work or on the road and your income has been affected, you need advice now. Contact Shine Lawyers to access compensation through your superannuation. I can't afford to be off work. Shine Lawyers. Let's right wrong. What if I get coronavirus? How do I do my rehab now? Why is it so hard to get out of bed? COVID-19 is impacting us all differently, which is why we've introduced Medibank COVID-19 Health Assist. With direct access to hundreds of healthcare experts, eligible members can receive health advice and support from their homes at no extra cost. Visit medibank.com.au to see how we're providing better support for our members. A lot has changed over the last few months, but globally, Allianz Group's commitment to serving its 100 million customers around the world hasn't. As part of this network, Allianz Australia has been supporting our customers through uncertainty and change for over 100 years. So you can rely on us to be here for you now and in the future to ensure what matters most. Because our support doesn't stop here. Thanks, love. Look what Amy got me. Be Mum's instant favourite with instant scratchets. Have you two muted? Let's look ahead to what looms as a fascinating National Cabinet tomorrow. Political correspondent Tim Lester joins me from Canberra. Good afternoon, Tim. Until now, we've seen such a divide between Daniel Andrews and Scott Morrison. Will we see unity this time tomorrow? Well, likely yes, Jackie, if only that every signal here today is that Premier Daniel Andrews and the other state leaders will get to lead this process, not the Commonwealth, in the National Cabinet tomorrow. They will get the same medical briefing nationally and they will set up a joint national approach, but they're only guidelines, then the states take it away. Already, South Australia, West Australia, Queensland have set out with their own relaxation of guidelines. It's been the southeast corner that has been more conservative and Victoria, the most conservative state in the southeast. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, Premier Daniel Andrews is likely to lead and the Commonwealth is likely to let him. What I expect is a clear roadmap out uh, with clear stages and then each state will be able to judge and will support each of the states as they make their judgments of their own circumstances and readiness to go uh, to easing restrictions. And Tim, tell us, how much does this opening up of the economy concern our health chiefs? Well, Jackie, there, there is some concern, but general cautious optimism, I think. The, the uh, main point for them is that we're not going to know how these uh, relaxations are going to affect us until we get at least five, six, seven days in and more like a fortnight or more when we can then meaningfully measure any jump in the COVID-19 cases at that time. But for now, most of the medical voices in the country seem to be cautiously optimistic. To get no significant increases is not realistic, but we can keep it at really low levels. Winter will be an issue as well because viruses transmit more than winter. But equally, we can look at other countries, such as Korea, for instance, and we know they've opened up and have kept a lot open and they still are not getting a, a, a second wave or big amount of, of um, uh, cases. The same for Taiwan. Professor Collignon does back most of the ideas suggested for an opening up, but he does say, Jackie, those big crowd events we all love are still a long way off. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it. Thank you very much. Tim Lester there in Canberra. Coronavirus restrictions in Europe are continuing to ease. In Germany, all shops are now open. Hugh Whitfield is in London, where Boris Johnson leads the way to ease Britain's social distancing laws, despite a surge in its death toll. It's a fairly stark message from the WHO as more countries look to lift their lockdowns. Overnight, Germany announced that all shops there can now reopen, albeit shoppers have to wear masks and practice social distancing. Here in the UK, Boris Johnson in the next 24 hours will lay out a roadmap to lifting parts of the lockdown here in Britain. He will deliver a national address on Sunday with the expectation being that some rules could be relaxed as early as Monday. That's even with the death toll here surpassing 30,000. Now, the deadliest in Europe, the second deadliest 
in the world after the United States. And the WHO is warning countries not to lift their lockdowns too fast and too soon. The risk of returning to lockdown remains very real if countries do not manage the transition extremely carefully and in a phased approach. There is increasing criticism of the British government and how it's allowed more than 30,000 of its own citizens to die to coronavirus when it entered the lockdown later than many other countries and hasn't imposed the sort of strict border controls that we've seen around the world, including in Australia. One distraction, though, for the government has been Professor Neil Ferguson. He is an advisor, a scientist who's been advising the government on how the lockdown should look, but he's been busted breaking his own rules, allowing his married lover to visit him during the lockdown, prompting some front pages like this one. Professor Lockdown broke lockdown to get his trousers down and Professor Lockdown, as he's been dubbed, has now resigned from his position advising the government. Megan and Harry have released a new video to mark their son's first birthday. The clip shows Megan reading Archie one of his favourite books in support of Saving the Children's Coronavirus Appeal. It's a duck and he's about to eat a piece of bread. <laughs> turn the page. Is that the piece of bread? Let's turn the page. Let's show everybody. It's a rabbit and he's about to eat a carrot. So cute. Members of the royal family have taken to Twitter to wish Archie a very happy birthday. We've got much more to come this Thursday. Up next, grave fears for a Melbourne woman missing in Japan. And for critical after a mine explosion, we have the latest from Queensland. Stay with us live from Melbourne. Celebrating Mum with social distancing. How Aussies are still showing love. And the last minute gift guide on Sunrise tomorrow. Some modems emit Wi Fi a bit like this. But a Telstra smart modem targets your device for faster Wi-Fi. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. Go fast. Or go slow. Go imagine your journey. Go up. Go down. Go around the long way. Go directly. Or go off on a tangent. And sometimes, go where you least expect to. The X1. Go there. For making sense of a changing world. For understanding what's next. For the edge you need. The Australian. For the informed Australian. When cold and flu symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes and lasts for up to eight hours. Nurofen for children. Hey, you there. Powerball has jackpotted to eight million dollars. Get moving. Grab your ticket now. Play now in-store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. Harvey Norman has everything you need for your home. Come into our spacious stores for the best of Australian made. Choose Australian made timber and fabric beds and customise the fabric, colour and timber stain to suit your home. Our range features the best names in Australian made mattresses and ensembles. Sealy, Sleepmaker, Beautyrest, King Coil and Body Balance. Complete your sleep experience with beautiful Australian made Manchester. Support local manufacturers and choose Australian made. Everything you need for your home. Browse online and shop in store. Now at Harvey Norman. Go! For a while, it have had like a kind of negative self-image. There's like this contrast between like the way that I was thinking about my personality and the way that I was thinking about my body. With Noom, I was able to learn how to interrupt those habits and create new ones. I've lost weight and I've made this change that I know is going to last for the rest of my life. I've never been this confident in my body. My name is Sarah and I changed my life with Noom. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. 
with Belong. You get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time, plus unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. Together, we're different. Belong. You're watching 7 News. This is a live look at Melbourne right now from our camera perched high above Docklands. It is currently 21 degrees and partly cloudy. Fears are growing for a Melbourne woman missing in Japan. Estelle Greepink is following developments this afternoon. Estelle, she hasn't been heard from since Sunday. That's right, Jack. 22-year-old Lilia Tran, also known as Julia, has been missing for four days now. Her boyfriend says he last spoke to her on Sunday when she was said she said she was heading out of her Japanese apartment to go and get groceries. The next day, her friends went to go and check on her and no one was home. Authorities then gained access to her apartment and they found her passport still inside. Her phone isn't picking up either, so there are fears that her phone has died. Now, Lilia was in Japan working as an English teacher. She's only been been there for a few months and she doesn't speak Japanese. Her boyfriend, who is very distraught, has said that this is extremely out of character for her. She doesn't really go wandering or go out of her comfort zone. She doesn't have any medical issues and she also hadn't fallen out with any of her friends. DFAT is providing consular assistance to the family here in Melbourne. Her boyfriend is asking anyone who has any information to please come forward. Jack? Yeah, very distressing situation. Thank you very much, Estelle. Four miners are fighting for life and another has serious injuries after one of Australia's worst mining incidents in recent years. The men were hurt while working in an underground coal mine in central Queensland. Joel Dry has the latest. The five miners, all aged in their 40s or 50s, are now receiving specialist care at the Burns Unit here at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. They flew in last night on separate air ambulances direct from Moorambah. Three life flight jets and two aircraft from the Royal Flying Doctors were utilised. Four of the men are in a critical condition, one is in a serious condition, all suffering potentially life-threatening injuries. They've sustained burns to their upper torso and airways. Four of the gentlemen required uh, intubation and ventilation. The incident that put them in hospital occurred at the Anglo-American coal mine at around 3.15 p.m. yesterday. It's believed gas in the confined space they were working ignited, causing an explosion. It happened right around the busy shift change period with potentially hundreds of miners underground. That would have been the worst case catastrophic uh, outcome with this particular incident. Five workers being burned and injured is enough, let alone further damage to, to workers. A number of mine inspectors are now on site, including the state's deputy chief inspector. The mine's owner, Anglo-American, today said they're devastated and don't yet understand what's caused this incident. Once it is safe to return underground, the company says expert technical staff will go in and begin their own investigation to try to work out what has caused this devastating explosion. Still to come on Seven's Afternoon News, tests on target. So when will our coronavirus restrictions be eased? And trees down, gusty winds hit the metropolitan area. We're back in just a few minutes. Our first home, our first big commitment. Sunday, they come home. That is bloody beautiful. Oh, this is like the ultimate. Wow, I've never ever seen that before. I love it. It's perfect. Will these lovebirds... Here we have a pretend engagement ring. ...get their fairy tale ending? <gasps> a very special reveal. Sunday at 7 on 7. Telfast knows that hay fever can strike at any time. It works fast to relieve allergy symptoms like watery eyes, a runny nose and sneezing. Nothing beats Telfast for staying alert and focused when hay fever strikes. Massell, proudly Australian made and owned for 38 years. This Friday, Saturday and Sunday, receive a minimum of $300 trade-in for your old double, queen or king-size mattress. Plus, we will deliver your new mattress and take away your old one. Offer ends 4pm Sunday. Bevmark's The Sleep Professionals. Better sleep, better life. 
for making sense of a changing world, for understanding what's next, for the edge you need. The Australian for the informed Australian. The game that makes the most millionaires is giving you 20 million more reasons to get super excited this Saturday. Tats Lotto's $20 million Super Draw Saturday. Play now in-store at thelot.com or the Lot app. Do yourself a favour and ditch the majors. Another real review from a happy Aussie broadband customer. With thousands of five-star reviews, an award-winning NBN network and all Australian support, it's time to tell your telco where to go. Aussie broadband. Can't beat feedback. Create your dream kitchen with the latest winter home essentials from Maya. With 30% off when you buy two or more items of kitchenware and 15% off the original price of appliances by Breville, Philips, Tefal and more. Maya, my store. Telstra Smart Modem is backed up by Australia's best 4G network. So if the connection to your house stops, your home Wi-Fi won't. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Philgate. Good afternoon again. Our top stories this Thursday in Melbourne. Victoria records 100,000 coronavirus tests ahead of target, but the cluster at a Brooklyn Meatworks continues to grow. Royal Commission documents reveal what George Powell knew about sex abuse in the church. Damaging winds strike across the metropolitan area. And a trucking company is at the centre of a police investigation into the Eastern Freeway tragedy. Premier Daniel Andrews will enter tomorrow's National Cabinet video conference armed with 100,000 coronavirus test results after the state passed its target ahead of Monday's deadline. It's expected Prime Minister Scott Morrison and state leaders will work on a plan for easing tough lockdown laws, but whether it's a united approach remains to be seen. I've got no announcements to make about restrictions. I plan to make those announcements on Monday. But I have no announcements to make on uh, restrictions today. If I have anything to say after National Cabinet, then I'll be before you saying that. Meanwhile, there are 13 more cases linked to the Brooklyn Meatworks, taking the cluster to a total of 62. Royal Commission documents released today for the first time show Cardinal George Powell did know about the offending of Australia's most notorious pedophile priest, Jared Risdale. Lawyer Viv Waller represented 20 survivors at the Royal Commission and joins us now on 7 News. Viv, thank you for your time. What's your reaction to the release of today's documents? Look, our clients are relieved and they certainly feel validated. Um, the Royal Commission found that issues of child sexual abuse were uh, on the radar of important people, including uh, George Pell, by 1973, particularly in relation to not just Monsignor Day, but also in relation to Ridsdale. And that has been very affirming uh, for survivors, and they are thankful for the good work of the Royal Commission. So where to from here? What, if any, action can be taken as a result of these documents? Well, the Royal Commission has uh, really just fleshed out the detail of its earlier findings that there were catastrophic failures of leadership, um, particularly in the Diocese of Ballarat, that sadly led to more children being sexually abused. The Royal Commission's work uh, is now at an end and this is the final piece of the puzzle. Uh, there are various recommendations for law reform going on in states and territories across Australia. But importantly, um, it will assist survivors to bring compensation claims uh, through the civil courts. We currently act on behalf of 260 clients who allege child sexual abuse arising in Catholic entities. Um, and 35 of those claims are issued in the Supreme Court of Victoria. And as part of those claims, those plaintiffs have to establish that there was a breach of duty of care to them. And one of those ways that that can be established to the satisfaction of the court um, is to show that people in significant positions of authority knew of sexual offending against children but failed to take appropriate action to keep children in those Catholic parishes safe. Yeah, very tough day for survivors. Viv Waller, thank you for your time this afternoon. 
A trucking company is at the centre of a police investigation into the deaths of four officers on the Eastern Freeway. Blake Johnson joins us live now. Good afternoon, Blake. Authorities are taking a close look at the company's fleet. They are, Jackie, and a lot of this deadly crash happened in Kew. The investigation is now spreading interstate. These pictures are out of Sydney this afternoon, where police from New South Wales and Victoria have been executing warrants on a logistics company. It's the same company Mahinder Singh works for. He's accused of being behind the wheel of the truck that hit and killed four police officers. Detail from police is light on exactly what they're searching for as part of these warrants, but they and road authority inspectors appear to be going over and under trucks, interviewing drivers and breath testing them. Mahinder Singh, a father of two, is in custody. The Herald Sun reports he's told prison staff that he swerved to avoid a witch he claims to have seen on the road. Jackie? Blake Johnson, thank you for the update. Parts of Victoria have been hit with wild and destructive weather. The SES has taken almost 100 calls for help in the past 24 hours as damaging winds cause havoc. Before midday today, some parts of Victoria saw gusts of up to 117 kilometres an hour. It started yesterday, we saw the wind picking up and then overnight it really took another a leg up again and we saw some particularly damaging winds about elevated parts of Victoria extending from the Grampians through to the central highlands right up into the Alpine area. Uh, this has all been associated with a cold front uh, which caused widespread damage uh, over in uh, Western Australia, uh, lots of power outages and in fact even yesterday that system produced damage through uh, Adelaide. Fortunately we've just got the tail end of this system so in some ways we've dodged a bullet. Gippsland and the state's northeast did dodge that bullet altogether. The next cold front is expected on Saturday. Police believe a Moe man who went missing two weeks ago may have met with foul play. Jared Loveson disappeared after what his father claims was a normal day spent with his mates. Tegan Dolling is following the investigation. Police are incredibly concerned for the welfare and safety of Jared Loverson. The 31-year-old was last seen in Newborough here in Mowie two weeks ago. He was seen riding his bike the night of April 15th. This photo was also posted on his Snapchat the same evening, but his friends have been unable to contact him since. Police also say that his phone was in use hours after he was last seen. We do have some very, very serious concerns in relation to what has actually happened to Jared. The day Mr Loverson went missing, he visited Woolworths. He even caught up with a friend. Jared's uh, friend has basically stated that uh, he was fine. He basically left uh, his house. Um, he wasn't sure of where he was going to, but uh, there was nothing unusual. His family and mates say nothing was out of the ordinary. One main reason they are so concerned is because he left behind his dog Slade, who is his best mate. And if you can imagine a seven foot bloke carrying his dog around like a baby, on his green push bike, you know. Mr Loverson is described as very tall. He's seven foot one with a shaved head. Because his disappearance is so out of character, the missing persons squad has been called in and they're leading the investigation. They are treating it as suspicious. There's confusion and frustration on the Victorian New South Wales border where lockdown laws are different depending which side of the Murray River you're on. We sent Andrew McCormack to find out how things are working out in real life. It's a case of so close yet so far for so many locals here on the border at Albury Wodonga this Mother's Day. Two cities divided by the New South Wales Victorian border but also now divided by the strict lockdown measures still in place by the Andrews State Government. Wodonga pharmacy worker Lynn Beaumont lives just a stone's throw from her son, daughter and grandkids but will be going without this Sunday. Very lonely in as much as I won't be seeing my children or my mother and uh, that'll be very different. Wodonga Mayor Anna Speedy says those south of the border are doing it tougher at the moment with movement restricted for Victorians to essential travel only while those across the river in New South Wales can catch up with friends and family in small groups. It certainly won't mean breakfast in bed for lots of mums. We have to remember in Wodonga that we are absolutely governed by the Victorian uh, state legislation and state rules so literally we could walk a few steps and would be in New South Wales. So it, it is a challenge. In an area already 
devastated by bushfires and drought. The Albury Rodonga region has largely escaped any major coronavirus outbreaks with no new cases for weeks. And living on the border does have some advantages for those in Victoria, with uh, many Victorian golfers making the most of golf courses still open on the New South Wales side of the border. A somewhat cheeky and convenient loophole for those looking for some fresh air and exercise during the age of self-isolation. Yes. yes, indeed. Thank you, Maka. Let's take a quick look at Melbourne's traffic now. Good afternoon, Sebastian Cant in the Deliver Trade Traffic Centre. A couple of crashes this afternoon on our roads, including Wood Street, Preston behind Northland, High Street in Laylor. Some emergency works on the Monash Freeway inbound near Wellington Road sees the right-hand lanes closed and speeds reduced to 60 over the Westgate Bridge due to high winds. Need trade materials? Download an order from the Deliver Trade app and have them delivered within two hours. Rates from $21. No minimum spend? Download Deliver Trade today. It is time for Sport Now with Sean Salby. And Sean, Western Australia is certainly causing a few headaches for the AFL. It sure is, Jack. WA isn't willing to loosen its border restrictions for AFL footballers. We'll cross live to find out the latest on when footy will be back. And find out whether NRL players will be banned for refusing to have a flu shot. Guilty of the murder of Special Agent Emily Byrne. She's alive. You've been gone six years. Where were you? Do you recall anything from your time in captivity? No. She must remember to save herself. She's dangerous. Castle Stana Kavik in the riveting new series, Absentia, coming soon to Seven. Bring your family together. Introducing Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. This Saturday with sports bet at three tracks for races one to six. Finish second or third and get up to 50 bucks back in bonus bets. BSI. So be as responsible with sports bet. We'll be watching. We are regional Australia. We are winemakers. We are coffee roasters. Fashion designers. Potters. Bakers. Shopkeepers. We are asking for your support because the wine is pouring. The kiln is firing. And we're open for business. Because where you shop matters. Discover how Visa's network connects regional businesses to customers across Australia and the world. You don't give in. You don't give up. It's called Aussie spirit. And it takes spirit to get through times like these. It's what inspires us to help. Together we'll get through this. Search Toyota here to help. This Friday, Saturday and Sunday, receive a minimum of $300 trade-in for your old double, queen or king-size mattress. Plus, we will deliver your new mattress and take away your old one. Offer ends 4pm Sunday. Bevmark's The Sleep Professionals. Better sleep, better life. At Coles, you can rely on us for your corn chips and for fixing your chipped bumpers. With Coles Comprehensive Car Insurance, you get quality repairs you can trust. Search Coles Car Insurance today. Not now. Unlike most modems, Telstra's smart modem is cleverly backed up by Australia's best 4G network. So if the connection to your house stops, your home Wi-Fi won't. Giving you Australia's most reliable home Wi-Fi. To experience better Wi-Fi, visit telstra.com today. With a world of knowledge. The black drongo is a bird species native to which continent? Stop the clock. The flaming drongo. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. Hello again. Western Australia is proving a major headache for the AFL restart. Live now to Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens. Good afternoon, Steve-O. WA, they're talking tough. 
Certainly, Sean, yesterday it was a Premier, today it was the Health Minister over in WA, doubled down and went very hard on this issue indeed. It's a real stumbling block for the AFL. Of course, WA won't allow fly-in, fly-out footy. They want a hub scenario. It was Roger Cook, the Health Minister, he went out of his way to ram that home today. He said there'll be no compromise. These are his words. He said, there's no confidence the AFL can maintain infection control and prevent infection spread among players and staff under the proposed model. So cop that, the AFL. Nick Natanui spoke today. He saw the lighter side of it. He was talking about the chances of a grand final being in Perth. He was asked on radio. A dragonfly. I'd love for it too, but um, I'd probably be fair to say it's not going to happen. <laughs> I've got a better chance playing at, uh, at Busy Park than playing, than playing at the Stadium. <laughs> And a lot of talk about cost-cutting in footy. I can reveal a story in community footy. The umpires in country leagues, suburban leagues, and also in the amateurs, memo's gone out from AFL Victoria. They want them to take a 10 to 20% pay cut. They own about probably $150 a game in the VFL and in the bush. A lot of young umpires going around. It's going to make it very tough to keep that pathway going, Sean, uh, when you think, would it be worth umpiring a game of footy, copying maybe some abuse and training all week for less than $100? So real issues in footy at the moment, Sean. It's a tough job already, umpiring. Thanks, Steve-O. Australian batsman Joe Burns says a summer showdown against Virat Kohli's India shapes as the toughest challenge of his career. Having earned his first national contract last week, Burns wants to prove his worth by piling on the runs against one of the world's best test outfits. Both teams are going to have a lot to play for with the number one ranking and the, the position on the World Test Championships. Um, and that, that's what's motivating us. Burns and Manas Labu Shane are among six new faces to be given contracts by Cricket Australia. The NRL is set to allow players who've refused the flu vaccination to restart the season on May 28. There was speculation players would be banned for not getting a flu shot, but Seven News understands the NRL is satisfied that around 97% of players have received flu facts. No matter, and I guess it's their body and whatever they want to do, but I, I got my flu injection. I'm just going to listen to the professional that um, you know works in that industry, and that's that's our doctor, Jason Chan. All Melbourne Storm players have had the vaccine. And Sydney Swans Premiership player Barry Hall could go toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with boxing legend Mark Tyson in a blockbuster exhibition bout. An Australian promoter has offered Tyson $1.5 million to fight either Big Bad Barry, rugby league legend Paul Gallen or former All Black Sonny Bill Williams. At 53, Tyson still packs plenty of punch. How do you reckon Baz would go? Well, he's 10 years what? younger, but Mike Tyson, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. He'd be in trouble. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sean. Donald Trump has described the COVID-19 pandemic as being worse than Pearl Harbor and 9-11. The president also hit out at a nurse who claims there's a massive shortage of protective equipment. Paul Kadak is in New York. Good afternoon. More grim predictions about the growing impact of coronavirus here in the United States with the former head of the Centre for Disease Control today telling Congress to expect the current death toll of around 73,000 to rise sharply in coming weeks. There will be tragically at least 100,000 deaths from COVID by the end of this month. Second, as bad as this has been, it's just the beginning. Until we have an effective vaccine, and unless something very unexpected happens, our viral enemy will be with us for many months and possibly many years. Now, today is National Nurses Day, and President Donald Trump invited some to the Oval Office to praise their efforts during this pandemic, until one of them mentioned the difficulties still in getting protective gear, saying she'd been wearing her mask for a few weeks now. PPE has been sporadic, uh, but... It's been manageable, and we do what we have to do. Sporadic for you, but not sporadic for a lot of other people. And after his visit to a mask-making factory in Arizona yesterday, Donald Trump today insisted that he actually did wear a mask on the visit, just not for long. And after yesterday saying that the nation's coronavirus task force would be winding down within weeks today, he's changed his mind, saying it will be continuing indefinitely. I thought we could wind it down sooner, but... I had no idea how popular the task force is. From New York, it's back to you.
The fires over comedian Celeste Barber's $53 million in bushfire donations is a step closer to being resolved. A hearing date has been scheduled to decide if the funds can go directly to fire victims, as was intended. Currently, the New South Wales Rural Fire Service can only legally spend the money on equipment and volunteer training. A plane carrying COVID-19 medical supplies has crashed in Somalia, killing all six people on board. The Kenyan aircraft was en route from Mogadishu when it crashed and burst into flames. The cause of the crash is not clear, but there's speculation it may have been shot down. Somali and Kenyan officials have agreed on a joint investigation. And terrifying pictures out of China, a six-lane highway bridge swaying in extremely high winds. But as alarming as it may look, Suspension bridges are designed to be flexible and move. The structure was closed and checked for damage just to be safe. Peter Mitchell is working on tonight's edition of 7 News at 6. Mitch, you've got an incredible story about how police saved an elderly woman who'd suffered a nasty fall. Yes, indeed, Jackie. The 82-year-old was living alone when she fell and lay on the floor with a broken hip for five days. This is police body cam video showing the moment officers arrived at her home to do a welfare check and knocked down the door to get in. Erica Freingruber was very grateful to see them. She was in a very bad way. Tonight we'll hear from Erica and the officers involved. When we heard her yell out it was a relief straight away because quite often we go to these jobs we don't hear anyone and we normally need to get approval to gain entry and we find them unfortunately deceased. So to hear someone call out was, yeah, it was gold for us. We'll explain how a community program of volunteers helped alert police to the danger Erica was in. It's a great story. Also tonight, which super funds have performed best during the pandemic? It's a worrying time for retirees. Tonight we take a look at the best ways to beat the super slump. And Jackie will also have the latest on the manhunt for a feared member of one of Australia's most notorious crime families, linked to the murder of a young mother at South Melbourne. All these stories and more are coming up at six. Jackie. OK, thank you, Mitch. Jane Bunn is back with the latest weather now. And, Jane, what can we expect tomorrow? Well, Jack, it is the last warmer day before the next cold outbreak. I'll have the details after the break. David, I'm signing you to the Home Secretary. Very good, Mum. Pleasure to meet you, Mum. I'm late for a meeting. She's got an agenda to heighten fear, to seize power. I don't need you to vote for me. I need to protect me. These plots do not always arise from outside. She's got you wrapped around her finger. This is a very dangerous politician. He's been an inside man all along. Looks like the Home Secretary couldn't be in safer hands. The must-see event. Bodyguard coming to seven. up. Is your bank giving you the best rate on your home? Stop throwing your hard-earned money away. If you're with the big four, we'll show you a lower variable rate or give you $1,000. Go to infochoice.com.au now. A lot of us are spending more time at home. Ow. Using a lot more electricity and internet. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. iSelect can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation. But we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. Some modems emit Wi-Fi a bit like this. But a Telstra smart modem targets your device for faster Wi-Fi. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. What's happening now, Detective? They're still there. You would have thought they'd moved out by now. Got themselves a little unit somewhere. Call us today to find out more about a reverse mortgage from Heartland. Heartland Seniors Finance. Few 
Most Oil Deluxe Crisps from Red Rock Deli. Wow, this really is an MS Dream Home Lottery. Wait, how many can win the grand prize? Ah, Token. Ah, and that explains the toucan in the kitchen. Get your tickets today. To win the chase requires a world of knowledge. Ricky V. Rock. Antarctica. Cape Town. Mexico City. But with such high stakes, all it takes is one mistake. The black drongo is a bird species native to which continent? Stop the clock. You're flaming drongo. New the chase. Coming up next on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. Hello again. We've had a windy day, but conditions are easing. The winds are northerly, so it reached 21. Nice if you're in a sheltered spot. Here's the current warning, and now only the alpine areas are at risk of damaging winds. The rest are in the clear. We've had patches of cloud and rain on the radar, but that is just a light spit of rain by the time it reaches the ground. Now, that's not the case in the southwest corner. There's showers and thunderstorms are there now. It is warm in the northwest. It's currently 26 degrees in Mildura. Zooming in and this is the last hour. A band of patchy rain, just a light bit of rain if anything at all. But that is it. That is clearing away. We'll have sunshine for the rest of the day. A cold front looks impressive. It pummeled Perth, it rocked Adelaide, but it is running out of steam and just brushing us. That slides away as the next cold front approaches. This one has a different trajectory. We'll be feeling that on Saturday. Tonight and tomorrow, a bit more light, patchy rain, heaviest in the southwest corner, so it is generally dry. Then a band of cold and gusty showers hits the southwest on Friday night and crosses through the state on Saturday. Cold enough for snow down to 1,000 metres, the Alps and higher ranges. On Sunday, it remains cold, but the wet weather is confined to the coast and southern ranges. Most are dry. It is Mother's Day, so let's zoom into Melbourne, and it's different from west to east. Lots of showers in these southeastern suburbs, but mostly dry for the city and northwest. Around the nation, sunny and 27 in Sydney, showers and storms developing in Adelaide. To Victoria, light patchy rain, generally dry tomorrow. Cool to mild in moderate northwesterly winds. Then a burst of cold and gusty showers hits the southwest corner at night. In Melbourne, it's not a bad Friday. A top of 20 with a mix of sunshine and some cloud. Now it's just a bit of a breeze. Nothing like what we saw today. That's the latest Tyler Moore at 6, Jack. Sounds lovely. Thank you, Jane. Peter Mitchell will be here for 7 News at 6 with new details on how coronavirus restrictions could be eased. For now, though, from the 7 News team, take care. Who is that? I don't know. It's Tane, Ari's brother. I don't think they like each other too much. He's a bit of a troublemaker. He's about to arrive. Some will love it. Some won't. I told you to stay away. Yeah, but you're not calling the shots now, are you? It's all that heavy weight. Who's your new friend? He's no friend. Maybe I'll see you around, yeah? Yeah. Maybe. Ah. <laughs> I didn't come here to make trouble. I came here to make sure my family was OK. Tane acts all innocent like he's a good guy, but he's not, and you know what? Walk away, Tane. I ain't going anywhere. Too bad to get used to seeing me around. 